Monster Itch Ghost Attack, a Scholastics book by David Luber. Chapter four. Something was written on my left arm as, as if part of the rash had been wiped away by the ghost's finger. Thistle. I checked my other arm. There was a message on it too. Please help. Both arms were bathed in an itch so fierce it felt like I tried to embrace a bonfire. I never felt anything even halfway as bad as this. And I'd had some legendary wipeouts on bikes, skates, and scooters. I turned around, I turned towards the stairs. I knew the pain would vanish as soon as I moved away. Ouch, that looks bad. From the ghost, but... Before I even took a step, the itch had already started to fade. I looked back up at the ghost. It was fleeing away. And just like in the barn, it paused by the wall as if it really didn't want to leave the garage. But then it leaped through the wall and was gone. You scared it off, Sarah said. You really need to learn to control that horrible scream of yours it's not a uh, i sighed and let it go maybe my shout was a little bit screamish but not a whole lot <laughs> never mind at least we have a message <clears throat> i watched the words disappear as a rash around them grew fainter but the rash didn't completely disappear. It looked a bit redder and larger than when we'd entered the studio. But what does the message mean? Sarah asked. Uh, it's about the town, I said. I, I think we need to do something in Thistles Falls to help the ghost. If we want to help the ghost, Sarah said. Uh, we sort of have to, I said. Otherwise, I might keep it may keep showing up and making me itchy. So, we don't have to help the ghost, Sarah said. I'm not getting itchy. I stared at her. She laughed. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's no way I'd miss out on this. Thanks, I said. I wondered what we have to do. We won't know that until we figure out what the message means, Sarah said. Wait! Sarah grabbed my arm. Ouch! Let go! She let go. Then she took me, then she told me her idea. We don't need to guess about the message. We can track the ghost down again and ask for some information. Ah, uh, no! I was absolutely not going to suffer through another round of rash writing. We'll go into town and figure this out. Sure, we'll try that first. Sarah looked at her watch. It's almost time for dinner. We can go into town tomorrow. As if on cue, we heard a ding-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling sound from outside. When we left the garage, I saw Gramps on the porch, ringing a triangle. I found it in the kitchen, he said. In the old days, they used they use these to call the farm hands for supper. There are lots of interesting old things all over the house. <laughs> That's for sure, I said, letting out a quiet sigh. Sarah sniffed the air. Something smells great. That was sure true, too. Dinner was awesome. Our grandparents wanted to have a special welcome to our new house meal to celebrate the move. Grandma had cooked up a pot of her famous tomato soup. Gramps fried up a batch of his handmade pierogies, which are like pockets of pasta stuffed with mashed potatoes. I feel that any dinner where you get pasta and potatoes is a great dinner. There were plenty of vegetables too. I usually I usually don't like broccoli, but Grandma had roasted it in the oven and it was delicious. In the middle of dinner, 
my arms started prickling and I caught a flicker of motion by the door that led from the kitchen to the hall. The ghost was there. I looked at Sarah. She saw it. I watched Grandma and Gramps. Neither, neither of them seemed to see it. I guess when you get vanishing cream in your eyes and also got it on uh, some something that was already vanished, strange things happened. The ghost drifted closer. The itch grew worse. It was time to test Sarah's theory. I let out a scream. The ghost backed off, but he didn't flee as quickly as before. I think he was getting used to my scream. Grandma and Graham slept from the chair. What's wrong? They both asked. I saw a mouse, I said. I pointed at the floor. If mice make you scream, you're going to lose your voice this week. And, and we're going to lose our hearing, Grandma said. This is the country, Gramps said. You can't not see mice. They're everywhere. Oh, sorry, I said. I glanced towards the doorway. The ghost was gone, for now. I checked my arms. They were a little bit blotchy. I didn't think my grandparents would notice yet, but if the blotches got much worse, they'd see them for sure. And maybe tell mom. Even worse, what if they saw the full-formed monster rash? They would totally panic. I tried not to worry about all of this as I finished my food. I can't believe it, I whispered to Sarah when we were clearing the table from dinner. About the ghost, she whispered back. No, about the broccoli. It was great. I'd even had a second helping. I mean, the ghost had was hard to believe, but me liking broccoli was totally amazing. After, des after dessert, did I mention there was two kinds of pies? We played board games until everyone started to get sleepy. Guess I'll go watch a little television, Sarah said. And after we'd put away the games, actually, I think I'm gonna watch a big television, she flashed me a grin. It's not hooked up, Grandma said. No cable, no satellite, no broadcast, sorry. It was my turn to flash Sarah a grin. <laughs> Though I knew no matter how much she might tease me, if the TV works, she'd share. She might like to make me suffer a bit or, or a lot, but she wasn't selfish. At least I brought my phone, she said. Uh, no single for that, signal for that either, Gramps said. We do have a landline if you want to call your folks later. Sarah and I looked at each other. No TV? No internet? Where were we? Both grandparents pointed to a bookshelf. There's your entertainment, Gramps said. We went over and studied my... I went over and studied my choices. There were lots of books about monsters. Uh, no thanks. I've had enough supernatural critters for one day. There was a thick book about ghosts. Sarah grabbed that. Try this one, Gramps said, handing me a book called Treasure Island. I loved that story when I was your age. Still do. Thanks. The cover looked cool with promises of pirates. I took the book upstairs and got ready for bed. When I started reading, Gramps was right. Treasure Island was an exciting story. But after a long car ride, a day spent running around outside, and a belly full of a little too much dinner and too much pie, I was half asleep before the end of the first chapter, or chapter one. But as I put the book on the desk and turned off the lamp, I felt the last thing I wanted. I felt alone, upstairs, in the dark. My arms started to itch.